Hello there. Before we get into my sketchbook tour, I thought we would do a little chat about the sketchbook itself. So I mentioned what sketchbook this is a little bit later on in the video, but basically this is my second version of this sketchbook. If I'm being honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this brand anymore. I used to be because I bought one previously. This is my second sketchbook from this brand, but they are very expensive. And especially after I traveled and I tried a new sketchbook for traveling, uh, which was a different brand, I realized that I did not like how this sketchbook was treating my sketches and my colors. Like I just found that the watercolors did not sit very well on it at all. So I think moving forward I'll be using a different brand, which is to say nothing bad against this company themselves. Like aesthetically the book is beautiful, but I think it just personally didn't work for me. As for sketching goes, uh, last year was a very lucrative sketching year for me. <laughs> I have, I think I have four sketchbooks going on at once. This one, obviously. Um, I did this one uh, and a month trip to Europe. So I finished that whole thing. This is the sketchbook that I was talking about. I absolutely love this and I will be using this brand going forward. So there's this one. I have this one, uh, which was a gift. And I use it kind of for standalone type figures. And I really, really love this one, which I think is just a house brand for a local art store. It's excellent. And then I also, excuse this terribly messy desk, I have a lot of projects going on. <laughs> I also have this one, um, which ended up becoming my concept sketchbook, which is also a house brand of a local art store. It's an excellent sketchbook. So I've been working through this, I'm almost done, and I definitely will show you guys when this one is done. Despite all of these sketchbooks, this one I learned a lot in. <laughs> so I started off, this one started before all the others last October. I felt a lot of pressure from all these really nice and fancy sketchbook tours online. And so I felt like all of my pages had to be postable. And, and that was really detrimental to my inspiration and my motivation to work in my sketchbook. About halfway through this sketchbook is when I went to Norway and I treated my sketchbook a lot more freely. So then I started changing my sketchbook style in this sketchbook. So this sketchbook is half beautiful and half ugly, but I think that is how most sketchbooks should be and any other sketchbook is lying to you. I hope this video provides you with a lot of inspiration and motivation to work in your own sketchbooks because it is so worth it. Uh, and don't judge me too harshly based on what you find in here. So this is the handbook brand Travelogue sketchbook. I'm not entirely sure what size it is, but it's somewhere around like 11 by nine, eight by 10, that kind of size. Uh, I got this sketchbook on October 27th, 2021. Uh, this was during 2021's Inktober. Uh, this is my second version of this sketchbook. And uh, I filled the last one with my Inktober drawings from 2021's Inktober. And it took me just over a year, uh, just to the 30th of 2022. So this sketchbook, uh, like I said in the intro, was kind of my experimentation phase. Uh, I was just discovering gouache and uh, really getting into watercolor and the golden age of illustration. So the beginning of the sketchbook is filled with a lot of experimentation. So this tree here, um, I made it up out of my mind. So I was very inspired by fall, uh, which is why there's some leaves and the tree's basically dead, <laughs> but this is all gouache. So at this point, uh, as I was leaving Inktober 2021, I felt kind of a void of the daily art challenge. So I joined a weekly art challenge where uh, I made up a story every single week uh, and then illustrated the story as the weeks went by. So I needed to create five illustrations of an original story that I made up all the characters, <laughs> the whole storyline, which was a little stressful, but honestly a great experience. So this was me kind of brainstorming. I had this idea in mind of kind of a witchy figure with a goat's head, so that was her. Uh, this was some dress I saw on Pinterest and I just added the goat's head just for some practice. This was my experimentation for some of the illustrations here. Uh, I'll, I guess, post those on the screen. And then this was a portrait of me that I made for my website. 
Uh, this again was over a year ago so you won't find her on the website anymore and I don't look like this anymore but it was very very fun to do. It's interesting seeing my version of these old illustrations. Old to me, they're just a year old, but seeing how I illustrated just over a year ago compared to how I illustrate now, obviously the kind of the style is similar, but I've improved in a lot of my techniques, so it's fun to see. <laughs> this was very much in the beginning of me doing this style. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I didn't know the balance between watercolor and line work. It was all very, very experimental. I did this while watching some Christmas movies, I think, <laughs> back in 2021. This was my favorite. I think these two are like 1930s photographs that I colorized. And then the rest of these are, I think these ones for sure, are copies of other illustrators from the um, golden age of illustration. So these are old illustrations that I try to learn from. Uh, and I believe that these ones were all photographs that I just saw of people and I tried to illustrate them. I still really love how these ones turned out. The rest of them, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> this was for two pieces that I did last December. Uh, this was for my Snow Spirit piece and this was for my um, Mrs. Robinson piece. Lots of bird heads, lots of rabbits. <laughs> Everyone said this kind of looked like me, which I can kind of see in the profile, but it was not me, I made her up. Uh, this page, for some reason, got a lot of traction on Instagram. <laughs> so these bears, there's another one over here. Um, these were part of a bear flash tattoo sheet that I did. Someone actually ended up getting this one tattooed, which is really, really cool. <laughs> the rest of them have not been tattooed yet. So if you want to, go onto my website and you can buy a ticket. This guy, he was one of my first like real, real attempts at doing this style. I did uh, the animal heads with people bodies for the Inktober that previous October. Uh, but that was just an ink line work. And I made a reel before adding ink and after adding ink. And that one actually went quite viral online. I don't know why, my, <laughs> my friends say that there's something special about him. I don't, I don't know why. I didn't put any extra effort in him, but people really like him. Uh, he was actually a Draw This In Your Style by uh, this other artist I follow on Instagram. She drew this little fox and then also a wolf that was just holding some Christmas packages. And then I decided to draw it in my style and this is what came up. This is actually my cat, Walter, the light of my life. <laughs> I, as I was experimenting this style, I just thought, you know, he's in my life all the time. I might as well draw him how I think he would look as a human. And I believe that he would be a very crotchety old man. <laughs> so I've got this crotchety old man with like a patched suit, um, some of his favorite toys here. This one I actually photoshopped onto the Fancy Feasts cat food cans and that video popped on TikTok and then Fancy Feasts themselves saw it and sent me like my own customized cans of him on Fancy Feasts food. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, you saw this before. This was part of the tattoo flash sheet. I still think it would be such a cool tattoo, like maybe on the back of the hand or like on your back or above your knee or something. I think it would be so cool. Ignore the amount of blank space. <laughs> this is for a commission that I did um, for like a Celtic character. Um, these were just some sketches that I sent over to the client. Uh, over here is, there's a lot of ink swatches. <laughs> this was really fun. This was a um, tell me what to draw challenge. So on Instagram and TikTok, I asked my followers what I should draw and these were some suggestions from them. So I'm pretty sure this one was just, they said a deer and I added some wings and it, this one actually inspired me to draw it again. And I turned that into some cards, which are now all sold out, but in the spring I'll have prints. Uh, someone said they wanted a fairy and a fairy dog and this is what i drew i believe i found her on pinterest um, without the mushroom hat and dress this one someone used the prompt wise so i drew an owl of course uh this is someone said like a fancy hippo so another one of my classic animal head human bodies <laughs> i really like him i think i want to redraw him with color he'd be super cool someone said just a poppy so i added a face to it 
Um, someone said a Rococo rabbit. Um, and then this was a mermaid, but a snail. So that's what she is. Uh, this here, I added these ones at the very end of my sketchbooking. If you go to my November studio vlog, you could see me like scrapbooking my sketchbook. So this one was actually a commission that I did this past December, uh, 2022. So this did not happen in the correct timeline, but I was really proud of this sketch. I do all of my sketches on parchment paper. So I really like this sketch. And then I just delivered this commission actually to the client. So that was really fun. Uh, these were part of some envelopes that I sent some stickers to somebody. Uh, they got returned back to me. Um, and so I cut up the envelope because I really liked the artwork on it. It's not mine, but I think it's so pretty. These were two tattoo ideas that I was thinking about for myself. Um, I have special attachment to strawberries and bleeding hearts um, and then robins as well. But I think I might design something else in that place. I hate this page. <laughs> so I was, I think I just recently watched like rewatched Pirates of the Caribbean during this time. Uh, so I was very inspired by piratey, tropical, monkey, <laughs> that kind of thing. And again, this was very early on in my experimentation phase in this style. And I was struggling a lot with it. I didn't know the balance of watercolor and ink. So these, this was me writing some rules <laughs> for myself to kind of remember as I drew. There's a lot of things that I like about this, but I think more so things that I didn't like. So I didn't end up finishing a lot of it and covering it up anyways. <laughs> so uh, from here, I was still feeling the pirate theme. So we have this, I don't know what bird this is, but they're often associated with pirates or the tropics. So we got this bird pirate. Um, I never ended up posting her anywhere. So you were the first to see her. More experimenting. It's really cool. I kind of feel like I'm viewing this as though a child drew it. <laughs> it has sentimental meaning to it, but obviously I'm very happy I've improved since now. This was, I just read The Wind in the Willows. This would be March, 2022. Um, I just read The Wind in the Willows. I loved it. And this was me doing some little spot illustrations for it. I really like how this one turned out. I love the bonnet. I think the rest I can improve on. <laughs> but these are like the type of illustrations that in old books, even if they were novels, they would have these tiny little illustrations in between the text. And honestly, that would be my dream if someone could just uh, commission me to do that. I wish, I wish. <laughs> at this point, I had this project in mind. I was actually at home recovering from two times wisdom tooth surgery. It went wrong the first time, <laughs> had to go in again. It was rough. But I had this idea that I wanted to illustrate the original grim fairy tale of Snow White. So I have a different sketchbook. I think I'll probably have a video one day where I go through that sketchbook. I'm nearly done it, uh, but they kind of, these ones kind of like go together. So half of the illustrations or like sketches are in that other sketchbook and then the other half are in this sketchbook. This was for one of the illustrations for my Snow White Grim Fairy Tale book. I wanted the stepmother to be young and kind of like the I ideal <laughs> sense of beauty. And then I wanted Snow White, this is her when she was young, but I wanted the actual Snow White to be more accurate of what women look like. Um, so yeah, this was me experimenting for the final illustration. I will put the final illustration here so you can see how it actually turned out. And then this year, again, not proper timeline. <laughs> this happened November, 2022. So end of the year, this was March, this is November. Um, this was for a really cool commission that I did, which you will see more of later, of designing a board game. So these were some cherubs in the sky. This was for my Snow White book again. The idea of painting houses really freaked me out. So I had to do a whole spread experimenting with the style because I literally needed one. Do I actually have it in here? Okay, I didn't end up putting the final in here, but I'll put the final image here. It's literally like this big in real life. I needed to draw one cottage of the entire book and it stressed me out so much that I had to experiment with other cottages. So these were all, I, I just researched really hardcore old German cottages and when they were, what they were made of. These were some images of actual real historic German cottages out there today. And I ended up going with this one uh, in my final image. But honestly, like I highly recommend if you are afraid of drawing something, just draw it 
so many times, so many times, because once I finished this spread and then actually went into the final, I got so confident with houses and I, I'm no longer afraid of drawing them. <laughs> This was for the first illustration that I had of grown up Snow White. There's quite a few illustrations before I actually get to Snow White herself. This is when I was trying to finalize her style. So these are some dresses that I was toying between. I ended up going with something like this. It's a little different in the final, but this was the main inspiration. I actually forgot I drew this. I really like this dress. I feel like I need to put it in a different illustration. So yeah, this was me experimenting with skin tones and colors and everything like that. Uh, this was for a study for another illustration from there. So this is actually me modeling for it. And then this is just some guy, he's the hunter. <laughs> and then these were the little illustrations that I did to border the pages in the final book. And then I edited them online, turned them into P and Gs, and then put them in the book. Some more <laughs> Snow White things. This is when I had to draw the dwarves. So I was researching old Germanic folklore because I really wanted it to be really German, old German based. This I believe is an Arthur Rackham sketch that I just copied um, just to kind of get the feel of the old dwarf style. I'm pretty sure these I was studying from other old artists. I ended up going with my own style though. This was, I do these kind of studies to kind of gather different ways of drawing things that I need to draw and then picking and choosing the parts that I like and kind of changing it for my own. I never, <laughs> I never copy anything directly. I do an annual self-portrait every single year. So this was me for my last birthday in 2022 and then pasted it in here. Um, I needed to practice drawing some kids because again, that was a very daunting thing for me. Uh, so that was some there. I really like how this one turned out. And then these were some indigenous Canadian women that I drew. I think, I can't remember what month this was when I drew it, but I think they might have found more uh, remains at residential schools in Canada. I'm Canadian, by the way. Um, and so I was just, my heart was heavy with that. So I drew some of these ladies. Okay, now we're getting into the real ugly phase. <laughs> At this point, what what month would this have been? I think this was probably May. I think it was May. <laughs> so I was pretty burnt out and I was basically just doing commissions and preparing for my Norway trip. So I, yeah, I <laughs> these pages are not very pretty. So I was gonna be part of a group exhibition in my local gallery. It was called The Big Tiny. So our pieces were literally this big. I've sold mine since. Uh, so these were, I knew I wanted kind of a clown themed. These were some experimentations for that. Either I was gonna go with a person. This is a real historic photo um, I found on Pinterest. I wasn't gonna copy it directly, but I just loved her eye makeup. Uh, this, I was thinking maybe a clown cat um, stealing that makeup idea, <laughs> or I was gonna go with a goose. And I did end up going with the goose because I realized because he's a clown, I could call the piece Silly Goose, which I loved so much. <laughs> and I ended up selling it at a market over the summer. Uh, this is my cat, Walter. I ended up drawing him for his birthday in kind of the same style that I drew myself, but as some sort of medieval-esque, uh, I don't know, royal figure. <laughs> I, can you tell that I just love him so much? I can't wait to draw him for his birthday this year because he's become an even more crotchety old man. <laughs> uh, this piece here was really fun. Uh, I was invited to a little pop-up event at a local greenhouse. Uh, they just asked me to come and draw in the middle of their greenhouse. It was so cool. So what I did is I gathered some of the dying tulips around my house and then I live painted this fairy woman there and then I glued all the tulips on so her dress is entirely made out of tulips. I hate this background color <laughs> so I never ended up doing anything with this piece but I think I will redo the idea this spring. And then these pieces here were for some client commissions. I always give my clients some options as to composition what they prefer so these were two options for one client and these were three options for one client. One ended up going with this one and the other ended up going with this one. I hate this page, so these were some more client things. I was burnt out with my own ideas and I was just accepting client commissions to kind of fill my time. So this was for uh, one client 
again, I was really scared of drawing gardens, so I was experimenting with that. Um, I hate how every single one of these turned out, but I think all the practice really did help me, and now gardens are a lot easier to paint. This was for, uh, this one is still connected with this, and then these ones here were for uh, my friend Riley. She released her first single actually recently, and these were some album art cover suggestions I had for her that she wanted to hire me for. Um, of all these options, she ended up going with this one, and here is the final on Spotify, which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> I'm very honored that she chose me to link with her wonderful, wonderful song. This again, I, my sketchbook is just getting worse and worse. These were all website uh, resources for me. I did not like my website at this point because my style was changing and I felt like I needed to update it. So I created a whole bunch of illustrations and then what I do is I turn them into PNGs in Procreate and then just can add them wherever I want on my website. So this was a lot of fun. So this is the header for my secret club, which is the Consortium of the Curious Few. And that is my monthly newsletter that you can sign up at the bottom of my website. So this is the header for it. Uh, this is my little tattoo ticket. Um, if people want to use my art as tattoos, they can buy one of these on my website. This is for my newsletter as well. And then this was so much fun. So if you go onto my website, just straight as it is, juliamartins.ca, it will bring you to this page that has a door um, with all of these pictures on it. Uh, and if you click the door, it'll take you into my website, which is, I don't know, so much fun to me. And this is what I'm most proud of. This, if you go onto that page, the whole wall is covered in a floral wallpaper and that floral wallpaper just came from this. So I was able to edit this all over the wall and I only had to draw a small portion of it. So this was a lot of fun to do. Uh, this one, if you go to my very first video, you'll see that I talked about this there. This was when I went to uh, a Soyuz in BC and I drew just while I was on that little vacation. So I won't go into too much detail because I talked about it in that video, but this was a tree that I saw, but I felt like it had eyes all over it. <laughs> And then I really liked this medieval crow lady, which I think I want to revisit later as well. This was also in a Soyuz. It's very overpopulated with quails. So I drew some quails. I never ended up finishing this, but it was this little cavern in the trees that I saw while I was kayaking. It looked like it was a little home, uh, but I never ended up finishing that. I drew this while I was out there too. You can watch me draw it in that June studio vlog. And then these I did at the same time. This was the page when I was experimenting for it. So this was for a local shoe company. They asked me to design some Converse. Uh, and so this was me experimenting. I knew <laughs> Stranger Things just came out, so I was very inspired by the 80s. This I put all over the tongue of the shoe. And then I drew these gals for either side of the shoe. But the shoe actually never ended up being made. So I was really disappointed in that. So I'll have to turn these ladies into something else. I also hate this page. So this, I drew this one first. I wanted kind of like an old peddler's cart to be my storefront on my website. So I started drawing this and it just wasn't working for me. So I moved on to black and white. I'm kind of in uh, Carson Ellis's style, but it just wasn't working for me either. So I just gave up entirely. <laughs> This was experimenting for the name and the icon part of my website, so I ended up using these green ones, and then also, I believe I started, I used this one. Okay, this was in the summer, I think just before I left for Norway. These, I was severely burnt out once again, so when I'm burnt out, I like to study other people's art, and I don't post it anywhere because obviously it's their art and I'm not copying it, like I'm not trying to copy it. Uh, so I just like to study it and learn from it. So these were some more Golden Age of Illustration works that I just learned from. This one I believe is a current artist. I don't, I don't know who she is. So if you know who she is, please tell me so that I can credit her. And then at this point, I believe it was August time. This was from a market. Uh, I was selling at the Chilliwack Pride Market and this lady came and roller skated up to me and she gave me a flyer to join her roller skating club. Unfortunately, I live far away from Chilliwack and cannot join her club, but the artwork on the sign was so cool. She says that it is her, so I think it's the coolest thing. I couldn't throw it away, so obviously I pasted it in here. 
And then these ones, I actually wanted to make some new stickers for my markets that were coming up. So he ended up becoming a sticker. And then I knew I wanted a blackberry head lady. This one didn't work for me, so I tried again on the next page. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. So these were other stickers. This is the next blackberry head lady. She ended up becoming a sticker. I made this one, which she ended up becoming a tote bag and a sticker. And then this bear with apples, because it fall was coming and I was feeling so inspired by that. I love how all of these turned out, and the stickers are almost out on my website, so if you want to grab some, go now. I don't know if I'll be restocking them. This one <laughs> is Eddie Munson from Stranger Things. I liked his character, I related to his character, uh, and then I saw how weird it was all getting on the internet, so I don't want to be associated with that. <laughs> and I also don't like how this turned out. But I was just re-watching Stranger Things in the summertime and drew him at the same time. <laughs> at the end of August, I knew I wanted to create some more pieces for fall, but I, again, was very burnt out. You know what? I actually linked my burnt outness to, first of all, imposter syndrome, which is so hard to deal with as an artist. Second of all, I was really ill and I didn't know at the time and it was making me feel completely exhausted and I was in a lot of pain and at the same time I was trying to come up with art ideas and it was just a really bad combination. So me feeling super discouraged and bad about myself, I could not come up with anything and I resort to studying the works of old master illustrators. So these are a lot of fairy tale pieces, not this one, but the rest of them are. I believe this is Jesse Wilcox Smith. Oh, I think I wrote down their names. Yeah, okay, so this is Jesse Wilcox Smith, Milo Winter, Florence Harrison, and I didn't label this one, so I'm assuming it's Jesse Wilcox Smith again. This one is an illustration. I believe it's probably Jesse. And then I added a crow head because I knew one of my illustrations was gonna have a crow head. <laughs> And then I finally, after I got medical help, my inspiration all came back. So this is when I started working on my fall illustrations. And again, my sketchbook now gets progressively uglier because I realized how I want to treat my sketchbook after my Norway sketchbook. Because in the beginning of the sketchbook, I was feeling a lot of Instagram pressures to make it like postable, which is not how sketchbooks should be. Sketchbooks should be very experimental and personal. Like, I think Instagram sketchbooks, it's so unhealthy, especially for young artists, because they go in thinking that that's how sketchbooks should look, and they're gonna go in feeling really bad about their own artwork. Whereas I think you should have two sketchbooks. One of them, sure, if you wanna post it on Instagram, make it super perfect, but the other one should just be for all of your concept sketches and experiments. So I'm moving more towards the experiment sketchbooks. <laughs> so for this piece, I think if you go to my September studio vlog, you can hear more in depth about them and actually see them. But this was the tiny little thumbnail sketch of um, my first one. And then I was practicing the sketch before I moved on to the final paper. And then this one is for the second one. I sketched this. This was me. Um, I posted a call on TikTok asking people to model for me. So this was me from the TikTok video using my model example. I wasn't holding my head, I was holding a water bottle, but I thought it looked funny if it was me holding me. <laughs> so this is just the sketch for that. Some thumbnail sketches labeling who goes where. And then these are some people from TikTok labeling where they're gonna go. And then this is more people from TikTok and then this over here is another commission piece, which was for another album artwork uh, for Dwy and his song Scars. So these were some concept sketches I sent him, experimenting with style of, the, of his Dwy bear, and then him as a child. So yeah, those were for him. And then actually the artwork is on Spotify as well, which is so exciting. So please go check out that song. I had access to it on Google Drive because he sent it to me so I could hear it while I was doing the art. And I honestly listened to it like over 30 times. So I highly recommend it. Now we were entering Inktober. This was the sketchbook that I bought just after the previous Inktober. And so I completed all 30 days of that one. Uh, and I was feeling a lot of pressure for this one. For some reason I can never do something simply. I always feel like I need to go above and beyond. 
So I don't like to just draw, you know, 31 unconnected illustrations. I would want all of them to be a part of a bigger story that people can connect on their own. So not only did I have to create 31 illustrations, I had to create a story that goes along with it. And that was so much for me. So I ended up not doing 31 days. I think I probably only did five, but they all connect, uh, which I was very proud of. So this was for the first illustration. This was probably one of the last days of September that I was brainstorming for it. This one and this one are illustrations from Heidi, uh, one of the versions of Heidi. And then the rest of these are my own, from my own mind, but brainstorming for one of the pieces. I think this was the only time I sketched it out in a sketchbook. I think all the other illustrations, I just dove right into the final pieces. This year is when I painted with plants from my garden. Uh, this was a lot of fun to do. I think this was either in my September or October studio vlog. So feel free to check that out. I was very proud of how she turned out. It painted entirely with flowers from my garden. This, oh, okay. So this one is what uh, these ended up becoming. Um, I sketch all of my pieces on parchment paper, uh, so it's I don't mess up on the actual final paper and damage that paper. So this was that. And then underneath is just some concept. Oh yeah, okay, so these are more Inktober concept sketches. Uh, and then I drew this the day that Robbie Coltrane died um, because I just, I love Hagrid, so I had to draw him. I was in a cafe at the time when I heard the news. Uh, this here was, I was designing some tote bags for my next market. So these were two little friends that I wanted to put on the tote bags. Uh, those are all sold out now. I uh, hate this page as well. This was just some more experimenting. Uh, this was part of a gallery exhibition that I did in May. Oh, look, Walter's here. Hi, Walt. He's definitely gonna be blocking some light. <laughs> Um, yeah, I sold pretty much all of the originals uh, from this series, except for this one. So this one lives in my sketchbook now. It is for sale on my website still, so if you like these two characters, please feel free to purchase that. This was when I started getting into more of the style that I want to continue going forward in my sketchbooks. Walter, I don't want you to sniff those. <laughs> No, those are oil paint brushes. So this was for Carson Ellis's Trans Monday and Tuesdays, uh, which is a really fun challenge that she has. Every first Tuesday of the month, uh, she releases three random prompts that you have to create an illustration for. So this one was, um, is a cat, has beautiful eyes, and is wearing armor. So I drew Joan of Arc as a cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then these are some weird ones. These were both um, 19, like early 1900s black and white photos of children. I wanted to try drawing children some more. So this was me sketching them out. Um, yeah, this one, she's a photo as well. And then this is a fish, obviously. <laughs> uh, we're reaching the end here. So this was done in November, just because I wanted to finish off the sketchbook. I am not happy with how the colors turn out. I never really use such vibrant tones but I'm really happy with how the characters turned out. So this was me experimenting with uh, the characters from Narnia. And then this is a flower that I got from a local art gallery when I was nominated for an art award. Halter. <laughs> uh, so I... <laughs> so I drew that flower from life. Uh, just quickly, I wasn't really trying too hard, but just to kind of document it down. <laughs> And then this right here is my sketch that I showed a client um, for that board game project that I was mentioning earlier. This is again, one of the card designs. Uh, so this was the sketch for the board game, which was very fun to do. And I really liked how this turned out. So obviously I wanted to keep it documented. I don't think there's anything interesting in here. Yeah, that is my mostly 2022 sketchbook, not counting my concept sketchbook and my travel sketchbook, which arguably are a lot better than this one. 
I really hope you enjoyed taking a look into my mind. I hope it gave you some inspiration for your own sketchbooks. Uh, I hope it motivated you that you don't have to have a sketchbook that is perfect and it can just be enjoyable and experimental. And honestly, I will say this, oh, pencil. <laughs> I will say this at the end of every single sketchbook video, I think from now on, don't throw away your sketchbooks. I have all of my sketchbooks from age, I think probably 12 onwards. All my earlier sketchbooks, I unfortunately threw away and I regret, but it's so wonderful to look through your old sketchbooks and see how much you've improved. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have uh, time after this to just sketch and relax. <laughs> Bye.